Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for BVI Finance's Breakfast Forum. Uh, we do apologize. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties with the minister and Ms. George. Um, so we are working out those. Um, in the meantime, I will just start the introduction of this uh, breakfast forum. Uh, we are talking today about the trade and investment uh, promotion, as well as we're talking about the Trade Commission's mission and its goals, as well as the business licensing and uh, Virgin Islands Investment Act. Uh, to present to us today will be the Junior Minister for Trade and Investment, uh, Honorable Shireen D. Flax, as well as Senior Policy Analyst, Ms. Lizette George. I see Ms. George has just uh, uh, joined us. Uh, they will be talking about how the, these acts, how the Trade Commission, as well as the Business Licensing and Investment Act is going to impact um, the BVI generally and the financial services industry specifically. Uh, this is a consultation process that they're going through, an information and consultation process. So today they will start the information with the financial services industry. And then subsequently, the acts will be sent out to all the participants so that you can review and ask questions. And we'll ask that those questions or comments on the act would be submitted by April 6th. Uh, we are going to start um, the presentation with a video, but first let me give you a little background information on the presenters uh, today. Uh, we have the Junior Minister for Trade and Economic Development, Honorable Shireen Flax Charles. Her experience and knowledge in sustainable and experience in has equipped her for leadership on this very important project for the government of the Virgin Islands. And she will be okay. 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 Apologies, again, while we work out those technical difficulties. As I was saying, joining the Honorable Shireen Flax Charles today would be the Senior Policy Analyst and Strategic Advisor in the Premier's Office. And she's also the former Director of Trade, where she started working on developing the trade the national trade policy, given her education and background in the areas of global business and international trade. Ms. Lisa George also has a wealth of experience and knowledge in the area and will be presenting the bill today. First, we will start with a short video introducing the Trade Commission. Uh, I welcome um, Honorable Flax Charles, as well as Miss George to just say good morning and uh, introduce themselves before we start the video. Please open your mics and greet our participants. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Unfortunately, the ferry had a breakdown, so we had to turn back and transfer to another ferry. But Nevertheless, we're happy to be here today. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much um, for having us here. Uh, we look forward to a very fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you both. And now we'll start with the video. The sound is not on.
Thank you. We're still not hearing the sound. I never because it's thinking as you think. and monitor all matters with the government of the Virgin Islands is pleased to introduce the Virgin Islands Trade Commission here are a few facts about the Virgin Islands Trade Commission you should know the Virgin Islands Trade Commission is a statutory body established under the Virgin Islands Trade Commission Act 2020 the Commission is constituted by a board of seven members from various sectors of the economy including legal, social, environmental, education, and the private business sectors. The Virgin Islands Trade Commission will function as a one-stop shop to effectively facilitate and monitor all matters relating to trade and economic development. Now let's talk about the sustainability and growth of the Virgin Islands. As the government works towards development of new industries for the expansion of the business environment, the Virgin Islands Trade Commission will provide the necessary services to achieve this. The business community will benefit from expert advice provided through the Commission, which will aid in the enhancement of services currently being offered. Why is the establishment of the Virgin Islands Trade Commission important to the territory? Here is why. The territory, as a jurisdiction, will successfully gain a competitive advantage, resulting in increased global intervention and integration into the international trading arena. Let's take a look at the main focus and functions of the Virgin Islands Trade Commission. The business division is responsible for providing business support services for local micro, small, and medium enterprise startup and expansion of their business or product line. This include technical assistance, training such as seminars and workshops, counseling, mentoring, and financial assistance. The licensing division is responsible for licensing, regulating, and monitoring all business operations within the territory. The investment division, branded, BVI Invest is responsible for promoting and facilitating direct investments into the territory by identifying new industries for development, providing opportunities for local and foreign investors, managing investment incentive programs, providing support services to investors during the investment process, and providing aftercare services once investors have successfully made an investment into the economy. The Fair Trade Division, which includes fair competition and consumer protection, will focus on managing relationships between business to business and business to consumer by promoting fair and effective competition in the conduct of all business activities, protecting consumers from unfair and misleading market conduct, developing and maintaining consumer codes of practice for businesses, 
and raising consumer awareness by creating a consumer price index and other publications. The Trade Division is responsible for identifying new industry areas for development in order to diversify the economy, providing companies that wish to expand their market to trade externally with valuable market intelligence, facilitating outgoing and incoming missions to and from countries with whom the Virgin Islands may wish to establish trade relationships facilitating trade shows and fairs, and offering a full range of export programs for producers interested in exporting their products into new markets. Finally, the policy division is responsible for policy planning, research, and development of the appropriate programs and initiatives for the effective operation of the Virgin Islands Trade Commission. Well, that was a mouthful, but in essence, this new agency will provide a wide range of services to address the needs of both private and public sector enterprises. The Virgin Islands Trade Commission is of significant importance for the sustainable economic development of the future of the Virgin Islands. Honorable Flax Charles. Honorable Flax Charles? Um, yes, I, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Um, there you have a, a concise um, description of what the, the Trade Commission is all about. We, we also have the Business Licensing Act as well as the Virgin Islands Investment Act um, that we've had the first readings of those in the House of Assembly and they will be coming up very soon for the second and third readings. Uh, before that, we will have um, public consultations and stakeholders meetings such as we are having now. Um, today is the first one and, and we're rolling those out up until the end of uh, March. Ms. George? Your mic. No, I, I think we're finished. supposed to have a PowerPoint as well. Yes. I was just waiting to see if you were finished. Yes. Okay. Good morning and thank you everyone uh, for this opportunity to share uh, the Virgin Islands Trade Commission with you. I'm going to share with you a presentation on the two legislative instruments that will be going to the House of Assembly. Um, but these two instruments are form, form part of the overall national trade policy of the Virgin Islands, which seeks to, it's a, it's a framework for trade and economic development and it seeks to ensure the ease of doing business within the Virgin Islands. A lot of countries are now uh, uh, taking stock of where they are in terms of the ease of doing business for investors as well as local businesses. And one of the things that we have decided is that we have to ensure that we provide the legislative framework possible to ensure that um, we reduce the time and um, create a cost-effective regime for investors, thereby creating a, an attractive investment environment for investors and businesses alike. So we have thus far, from 49 instruments, about three instruments completed. 
We have the Consumer Protection Act, which was recently passed in the House. And now we have the Business Licensing Act, as well as the Investment Act, the Virgin Islands Investment Act, both which will be read in the House as Juno Minister mentioned. I'm just going to cover them briefly, um, given the time, but we encourage you to take the opportunity to review the legislative instruments and provide feedback on these instruments because your feedback, the feedback from the private sector is very important and very valuable in ensuring that uh, we put on the books um, instruments, legal instruments that will benefit not only the private sector, but the entire territory on a whole. And um, we want to be able to work together with you to ensure that. So I'll proceed with introducing both, both of the instruments in my one presentation. And thereafter, you can um, provide questions or ask questions accordingly. So the first one is the Business Licensing Act. Oh, and note, both acts, the Business Licensing Act as well as the Investment Act, they're very, they're very much linked to each other in terms of helping to set up and start a business in the territory. So the Business Licensing Act 2020, it seeks to repeal the, the existing Business Profession and Trade License Act, which is currently um, being utilized for the licensing and regulation of businesses. This new act will be re responsible, will, will license and regulate all economic activities within the BVI. It outlines the requirements and licensing procedures for establishing and operating a business within the Virgin Islands. It also established appropriate standards for obtaining a license through regulations, as well as um, apply, it applies appropriate fees to specific types of activities. In outlining the application requirements, um, I know this was one of the challenges that we had previously in terms of understanding what the requirements are for BBI Islander and non-BBI Islanders. So it will clearly outline um, define what the requirements are. While uh, for BBI landers, we have to show the proof of status for persons who are not deemed to belong or, or not BBI landers, they will be considered as foreign direct investors under this new regime. If it is a corporation, um, it should be either beneficially owned by BVI lenders to be considered a BVI, a BVI company, a BVI business, sorry, not a BVI company, a BVI business. And, um, or it must be approved as a foreign direct investor under the Virgin Islands Investment Act. In terms of an application um, for BVI belonger business, a cover letter is required, along with other supporting documents. And all of these will be highlighted or described in the act as well. Supporting documents include proof of, proof of the applicant's status within the BVI, a business profile giving details of the proposed business, and other general information as it relates to their, to their qualifications, if it is required, as well as any other documents that may be required by the Trade Commission to facilitate the, the licensing of the appropriate business. As it relates to application by non-belongers, non, as I said previously, non-belongers are consideration are considered foreign direct investors under the new regime. So they will be required to first apply under an investment proposal, and then they will be able to apply 
for the business license. But all of this will be done in one shot because the trade commission is a one-stop shop. So you don't have to make two separate applications. Once you made the one application as an investor, it will be carried through through its entirety. So you don't have to worry about applying here, there, and everywhere. Because the trade commission will be a one-stop shop where you where the investor would be, where the investment promotion agency will be the interface between the investor and the government agencies. So the following documents are required under the business license regime for investment businesses, an investment business profile, you will receive an investment approval. Once you receive an investment approval, then that will accompany the application, a personal reference, a business reference, financial reference, police record, a copy of your picture page of the passport and any other general information as it relates to your qualification and the, and the, and the business that you are conducting. For companies which are considered a, legal, a separate legal entity, other detailed requirements in addition to those other requirements include detailed outline of the operation of the company a copy of the certificate of incorporation, the MA, details of shareholding, a register of directors, and any information on the principal as, as in the previous slides mentioned. And then of course, if you want to be, to be determined as a local business, then you would show the percentage that is determined by government to be considered a BVI business, a BVI owned business, my apology. As it relates to evaluating the applications, the trade commissioner will take a number of things into consideration. This list here is not exhaustive. I did not take everything from, from the act, but it's they're generally the, the major ones identified in terms of looking at a, a person or business's previous conduct, um, whether the business is one that is traditionally reserved for, for Virgin Islanders, um, whether the efforts that were made by the company um, to obtain Virgin Islander participation, and this is only for the business licensing, it's not for investors. It could be for investors, but they have a choice whether they want to, whether they want to um, enter into joint ventures or have their have their investment on their own. The necessity, if any, uh, for the institution of quotas. That's if the government sees that there's an oversaturation of a particular type of business, and then they would determine quotas. And of course, finally, the socioeconomic impact of the business or even the proposed investment on the economy, whether it would benefit the, the economy in terms of the government strategic direction or whether it would hinder um, progress of the economy, of economic growth. The new business licensing, well, based on what I've just said there before, Majority of the information that was in the old act, which is the Business Profession and Trade License Act, uh, some of them still remain. Um, and we only uh, tweaked some of the information from the from the business from the Business Profession and Trade License Act and made it more streamlined to ensure that uh, we reduce the time and effort for obtaining a license, a license. However, as it relates to classification of businesses, we have made significant amendments in terms of using the internationally recognized standard industry codes for classifying economic activities. And we thought that this was the best, um, in our research, we thought that this was the best approach so that it was to be able to 
collect the necessary data that we need to ensure proper decision making when the time comes. So we have about 21 different codes, um, well, sections, economic sectors or sections identified from agriculture and forestry, straight down to construction, um, straight to financial services and insurance, as well as um, real estate, the professional services, and the list goes on and on as you would see here. And this here is actually um, a schedule in the business, the business Licensing Act, this under the new regime. So this is how businesses will be classified now based on the economic sectors or the economic activities being undertaken within the business. Under the new regime, of course, uh, the fees, fines and penal penalties have been revised and that was done on, that will be done under the statutory instrument um, which is the statutory rates, fees, and charges of 2005. Some of our proposed fees that we intend to implement are application fees ranging from $20 to about $75, well, $20 for regular business by, by belongers, $50 for non-belongers who are considered investors, and um, $75 for professional applications. We also have fees for amendments to licenses as well as a fee for copies. As it relates to the business license fees, uh, over the years, we have found that the fees were rather, rather low. However, however, um, government has, has decided that, you know, there needs to be a revision of the fees. However, it may take an in incremental um, phase or it may be done in a different manner, that I, which I cannot speak to. So I will not speak to that today because I'm not the decision maker. However, the proposed fees for the classification of businesses would range from 150 to 1500 for belongers and um, 1500 to 15,000 for non belongers, which are considered foreign direct investors. And I must say, however, these fees are very relative on the international uh, level. And they're actually still quite low in comparison to some of our regional and um, overseas territories counterparts. So, but these are the proposed ranges that the, fee, the new fees will, will undertake. And of course, like I said, it will be a phased approach in terms of implementing the fees. Now, part two of the presentation is fo will focus on the Virgin Islands Investment Act, which is linked to the Business Licensing Act, as I previously said, uh, which is to help to generate investments within the territory of the Virgin Islands. So the act um, provides for the enhancement of economic development in the territory through foreign and domestic investments. Um, of course, what is required under the Investment Act is that investors provide a proposal, an, investor, uh, an investment proposal in whatever sector um, that investments are, are promoted in, which we will see in further slides. But this is a this is um, a guideline for how the, pro the proposal should look and the contents that should be in the proposal in terms of the name, address, description of the proposal, the principles, proposed location, land if you require land, the startup date, the proposed startup date, management requirements, 
capital investments, employment projection, financial arrangements, all, which also includes projection, and of course, any envir environmental issues. The areas of investment that we will be seeking to promote um, ranges from tourism, financial services, the professional services, fisheries, environmental, alternative, the energy, infrastructure, manufacturing, which is light manufacturing, not, not nothing um, heavy, uh, we, but we would like to look at very low volume, but high value manufacturing. And of course, of interest to the financial services sector, business process outsourcing, as well as business support service centers, uh, which will help to help to address the, the matter of economic substance for clients or companies of the BBI. And of course, those will be in the areas of IT administration, finance and accounting, human resources, legal processes, shared services, shared service centers, software development centers, and high-tech repair centers. All of these, um, these area, the business support centers, can also be that there can also be a focus of um, special economic um, zones for some of these areas as well. In terms of investment incentives for investors, the investment incentives will be based on performance and benefit to the economy of the Virgin Islands. Uh, the three areas is residency by investment, customs duty exemption or reduction, and uh, tax reduction in various areas. Sorry. In terms of incentives for the project proposed, the eligible projects would be for constructing or expanding facilities, uh, for building or expanding uh, physical or technological infrastructure, or for starting or expanding the activities of strategic services. So those three areas, um, or those three project areas, are what would be eligible or the purpose for which investment incentives would be offered. And the eligible assets will be for land acquisition in terms of taxes and fees, land ac acquisition, building acquisition, um, building materials, import of building materials, technolo technology equipment, as well as any intangible assets, which may include um, any licenses, um, permits or even uh, intellectual property. I'm going to stop here so that we can feel as much quest as many questions as we possibly can. Um, and like I said, I'm, we encourage you to read the bills, provide as much feedback as we, as we possibly can so that we can ensure that we have viable legislative instruments on the books that would benefit the, both the private and public sector for the development of the territory on a whole. So thank you very much. And um, we're looking forward to any questions that you may have that, okay. we, may, that, we, that we may be able to answer today. We might not be able to answer all today, but we will try our best to answer as many as possible. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. George, uh, for that presentation. And thank you very much, Honorable Clax Charles. We do have a number of questions already in the, in the, in the chat, in the Q&A. 
But one of the questions that I had in, in terms of your, what you, you presented, you said uh, beneficially owned by the BVI, um, uh, is, how is it uh, considered? Is there a percentage threshold? How would you determine what does beneficially owned by a BVI in, in that category? So in the in the act, it indicates that those the necessary regulation will be put in place by the minister and government of the day to determine what those thresholds will be. We did not. There's a num, there's a there are a number of things that were not put in the act itself that will be put in regulation, mm -hmm. and it's for a matter of flexibility as as trends go because you know it's much easier to to amend regulation than it is to amend an act so the so things such as standard requirements will be in regulation um what you just asked in terms of of the thresholds the thresholds will be placed in regulation. So investment thresholds will be placed in regulation. Threshold in terms of, well, percentages um, for the company will be placed in legislation. And the reason for that was those things will be determined based on how the economy is going. It will be based, number one, on how the economy is going, and it will be based on how which direction the government desires to take the economy. Okay. Let us get into the questions that we have from our participants. And we have quite a number of participants online. Um, I see 81 right now. Uh, trade Commission is all about uh, developing the country. The government is not approving trade license to foreign investors. Do you have plans to change this situation? Economic Substance Act requires some companies to have substance in the territory. That's our first question. Um, can, I, I, I don't think I understand part of the question. You said that- um, The question is saying that- um, you you, but you said that um, these licenses are not being given to foreigners. Is that what you said? This is the this is the uh, question that's being put forward. It's saying that um, government is not approving trade license to foreigners. And do you have plans to change this situation? I don't think it's it's correct, but you can um, respond. Yeah, yeah I, I I I will speak to that that part of it. Um, that definitely is not correct. Um, we have been issuing licenses to non-belongers as the term goes here in the BVI. What I would say is that there's a process when that application comes into trade. Once it has a non-belonger component, it is passed on to the premier's office and that is where it is dealt with. Um, we have, there was an, a great backlog from the previous government and then a deluge of applications that came in um, once this all government was elected. It is taken a little while, but um, I would say that when the Trade Commission comes on stream, that process will, will change, change a lot because we will have a board that, that, that will come into, into the picture and all of those decisions will be made for the most part on, on, on the board level. But to say that no applications um, are being approved for, for, for non-belongers, that is in fact not correct. But, but it is taking a while. And I, I, I again want to stress that we met hundreds of non-belonger trade, trade license applications there when we came into office in in March of 2019. Not hearing. Oh, sorry. A follow-up question is, how long does it take to be approved for non-belonger uh, application? 
that that is something that um it all depends on how long it would take to for the due diligence and all of the other processes to be to be in place and um as i said if we have 500 applications that we met there someone coming in with an application today um it will be put in a queue unless it is something that 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 will make a major major difference to the economy of the of the territory so um i cannot give you a timeline that all depends on the on the premier's workload and in moving those applications forward i know he meets with the director of trade at least every two weeks to go through trade those non belonger trade license applications. Moving on, if the foreign investor hasn't been in the BVI, what kind of document he, she should provide? Lizette? In terms of when they're applying for an investment? Yes. Um, like I like I initially said in the in the presentation, they have to submit a proposal, an investment proposal, outlining all that the, all of their requirements. In addition to that, they will need to submit references, business personal banking references, information on their company and their, quali their qualification if required. It dep depends on which sector would require that because not all sectors would require um, qu qu qualification, but it would require a history on the company which would be included in the investment proposal. Okay. We have that, a um, may, may I, may I, however, add to Juna Minister's um, answer to to the two questions, uh, because with the new regime, and that is the reason why government decided to to undertake this initiative in order to streamline the process the processing of all applications, not only foreign um, investor ap application, but all applications to ensure that the processes are much more simpler and also much, much faster. So while it is, we may have a, a, a bit of a challenge in terms of um, approving some of these licenses, understand that the reasoning for initiating the, the new regime is to ensure that all applications are dealt with fairly and equitab equitably via this new regime. And expeditiously. With, so no guesswork or anything. It will be outlined. It will be outlined. The processes will be outlined once 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 persons submit have have submitted all of the required documents once they've met all of the requirements then they, they, they can be able to to receive the necessary feedback that they that they need as it relates to um setting up their business okay we have quite a number of questions so um let's move swiftly along uh, why the, I guess, the disparity between um, the fees for belongers and non-belongers if they are doing the same type of business? I'm not sure you heard the question. I, I, I heard the question. Um, I guess Lizette can give her take. Um, that, is, that is what we're seeing across all government services, as far as I can, can recall, um, there are fees for belongers, there are fees for, for non-belongers. Um, 
I am not seeing it as a as an issue. Maybe persons are, but um, I I I would think that there are certain privileges um belongers have, um whether they're born here or not, and um you see that across the board with all government services that have a belonger or non belonger component. Okay. Um, okay. So I can I can add the, the, the reason for the disparity is that um, the foreign direct investors or the person who is a non-belonger is considered a foreign direct investor under the new regime. Okay? So so for a foreign direct investor and a and a and a local business. Uh, will be two different two two different things, if you understand what I'm trying to explain there. But but the 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 act it itself indicates that persons who are not belongers are considered foreign direct investors. Okay. In which category falls fintech companies? Have you engaged conversation with internet uh, providers for the territory to offer adequate, fast, and reliable internet services so that these kinds of investments may concretize business here? So you have two questions there. Um, what category does fintech companies fall? And have you talked with the internet uh, service providers about having, I guess, more reliable internet um, uh, services to accommodate these types of business? I'll speak to the, the, the speaking to the internet providers. That is an ongoing conversation. And it is something that we, as a government, we're very passionate about it to get it sorted. I will give you a simple example. We, we, we are asking businesses to be innovative. We have a ferry company now, a local ferry company that is providing services of paying for their tickets using an app. And you, when you get on board, you just show your phone and the, it will click off if the internet works. I too have had the unfortunate situation of having to wait until we dock, whether it's in Virgin Gorda or Tortola, to be able to pay for my ticket online. So it is something that we're very passionate about and we're constantly speaking with the TRC and, and the TRC speaking to the providers to get the service to where it needs to be for us to be able to move the entire economy forward. Thank you. Um, business support uh, services centers, the Trade Commission will be, will it be aligned with the Labor Department and Immigration Department? Everything will be aligned. It, like Lizette mentioned before, it's a one-stop shop. So you won't have to go to labor and immigration separately. Everything will be done through the Trade Commission. And Lizette, you can elaborate on that if you like. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Junior Minister. Uh, do, do you need me to answer the previous question or no? In terms of wh what category they, they fall under? The FinTech, yes. FinTech. Um, FinTech will fall under professional scientific and technical activities because it encompasses both financial and um, ICT, which are two other um, two other categories. So things of this nature, in terms of new on the market, will fall under the professional, technical, and scientific. And with the with the new categories, we will have explanatory notes in terms of the type of activities that will be under each of the 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 um, the categories. So it will be quite easy to understand. And to address the other um, question, through the Trade Commission, the Trade Commission will be the one-stop shop where it will be linked between the private sector and the government agencies. 
So investors or businesses can come to this one stop location and have in terms of starting a business, um, let me let me deal with the the investors since this this sec this sector may focus more on investors. So and in the IPA under the Trade Commission is responsible for promotion and facilitation of investment. Once an investor decides he's going to invest in the territory, they establish a relationship with the IPA, which is the Investment Promotion Agency. And the investment promotion agency works with that investor in terms of setting up their business, gaining all, getting all the license entry, dealing with their work permit, as well as providing aftercare services in terms of support for the investor, even after they have invested in the territory to ensure that number one, they are meeting their, their agreed upon um, requirements as an investor, as well as meeting their needs in terms of government's responsibility to them. So once a performance, once an, a, an investment agreement has been made with an investor, the IPA is responsible for monitoring and evaluating that and ensuring that the, the, the relationship or both parties are meeting their, their responsibilities under the agreement. Okay, um, is there a minimum to be uh, qualified as a foreign direct investor? Those minimums will be determined by the government through the appropriate regulation. And it will, they will be um, for specific sectors as well. For trade licensing, uh, trade license applications recently submitted, will the new act apply? I guess the answer is no, because it hasn't been passed. But right. Not until it's passed. Okay. Right, exactly. Let's and, move. And those, those applications, based on my correspondence with the Premier, they are trying to speed up those applications. So uh, persons who might be online would um, should expect to hear something within the next three to four weeks. Okay, please could you elaborate on the foreign trade aspect? Is this something that the UK government has approved on an entrustment or else how does the government propose to address the view that things like foreign trade agreements bilateral uh, investment treaties and the like might be seen as within the external affairs remit of the UK government. Um, I think I can answer that question. Um, under the uh, 2007 constitution, the entrustment letter devolved certain areas of responsibility to the government with respect to uh, external affairs and that's under sex section 60 of the, the Constitution. And that includes uh, matters relating to economic development and trade. So these matters are devolved for external affairs to the local government. So they are under the remit and responsibility of the local government. Um, the next question is, when is it expected for the Business Licensing Act and the Investment Act to be passed? Um, I, I think that we will we will we are probably looking at sometime in April or May. Our consultations, the public consultations, must be done before the bill um, comes to the house. Both bills comes to the house for the second and third readings. Okay. Uh, does and the of course, and of course, any bill that is passed in the house still has to be assented to by the governor. So we, we might say two or three months and if the governor does not assent, then it will not come into force. Okay. Does the government have a published trade policy that sets out its objectives? There is a national trade policy which was approved in November 2000, 
Unfortunately, I can't remember the year. But it's the national trade policy which establishes the, the, the framework for trade is what we are using and utilizing to develop all of these instruments. So all of these instruments um, are produced through that policy, that trade policy. And of course, you know, I, I think since it's been, since it's been approved, I think it was 2013 or 14 or, I can't remember. So I'm not going to try to say that, but I can, we can provide that information for you um, when it was, it wasn't published anywhere simply because it is the framework, we, de we developed the framework of legislation, regulation, strategies that would seek to address the national trade policy. Okay, okay. how many, how many uh, trade licenses, I guess these are the foreign uh, non-belonger trade li licenses are pending um, approval? We don't have that number. Um, uh, we... I, I cannot give you an exact number. I can get that and um, get that back to you, get that information back to you. But there are quite a few. There are quite a few. Like I said, that there were some that were there from before this government um, started operating. So, um, but for me to give you an exact number uh, would, not, um, would not be honest just off the top of my head, I would need to get that information directly from the premier's office. Okay, um, our question is, we will, we will be sharing the slides um, after. So yes, uh, saw earlier news to promote working in paradise, that is foreigner can simply come and stay and manage their global business from the BVI. Under this arrangement, any requirement from the Trade Commission for this group? That's a question for Lizette. I, I'm not sure if that was covered um, before since with the pandemic. Um, it is something that we are, um, we, we will be promoting. So whatever, whatever it takes to be able to do that, we will, um, we will do it. Um, according to to the to the letter of the law, and and that is why we when we go into what we call the committee stage, changes can be made to the to the act, so to the bill. So that is why we are meeting with all of the stakeholders and the communities throughout the territory, so that we're able to get recommendations and suggestions, and um, those things can be added to the to the bill in the committee stage before it is passed. And um, in initiatives such as those are, are usually handled under a special, special arrangement, right. a SEZ, which will be a special, a specific po policy directly for that initi initiative. I guess this is a comment. Can we start working with formally agreed timelines and turnaround times for both landholders uh, licenses and business licenses and move decision making away from ministries, premier's offices to administratively agreed procedures to create more certainty in doing business in the BVI? The current approval process is not conducive for doing business in the BVI and leads to months and sometimes delays for years. And that is exactly what the Trade Commission is um, going to be doing. I believe Lizette did mention that earlier. Uh, it's going to be streamlining the entire process. Right now, non um, belonger trade licenses are uh, the, the approval is done at the trade department with no, no interference from any elected official. It may be interference isn't the right word, but it's already said. <laughs> with no interference from any elected official, the director um, approves those licenses 
the only licenses that goes to the premier's office are the non-belongers, but with the coming on stream of the trade commission, all of those processes will be within the commission itself and the approvals. So it will be a more streamlined pro um, process with dedicated criteria where basically you will just be able to fit it into an algorithm and it will come up approved or denied if you don't have the right criteria when all of the due diligence and all of these things are done. But it also, I think, will depend on the, on the, on the, on the scope of the project or the, or the business. Um, certain things, I think we will have to get information from elsewhere outside of the BVI. And so sometimes a specific timeline might not work, but we certainly do not expect that it will take months and months and sometimes years. That is not the aim. That's not where we're moving towards at this point in time. We want a very efficient and expeditious um, process. Okay. Um, the next uh, two questions were, I think, um, answered. Uh, will there be an expedite fee and, and why not um, just make an objective administrative uh, procedures? And I think you just answered that. That's what this new uh, regime sets out to do. So what will happen to pending applications? Will they be delayed while we wait for the new legislation? No, they will not be delayed. Applications are being processed all the time. And as I mentioned before, I, I, I was in contact with the Premier while I'm on, on here for the non belong applications. Those are being processed all the time and we're hoping to get most of those out within the next three to four weeks. Even the regular, the, belo the belong applications, they're being processed all the time. Okay. The estimated time of processing uh, business licenses well um for the you mean with the new regime or with the with what with or presently well i think um you can talk about the new regime because we all understand that there have been some challenges with with uh, um present uh, okay lizette i'll let you answer that one you haven't addressed that um previously but with the new regime, we are trying to have the, the, the timeline to be between uh, 10 to 14 days. In the act, it indicates that once um, the, the commission is satisfied that an application has met all of the criteria, all of the requirements, response should be given to that person within seven business days. But that, that is dependent upon the fact that the application has met all of the requirements. So that puts the onus on the, on the applicant to ensure that their applications are complete. But once their app application is complete, the law re requires the commission to have a, have a response to that person within seven business days. Okay. The future of the jurisdiction must be dependent on responding quickly to the challenges presented by economic substance, which means increasing FDI flows. COVID and accessibility infrastructure have damaged tourism and financial services. We consistently rank highly on international ease of uh, doing business, but very low on the ease of doing business uh, domestically. How is increasing protectionism beneficial to the BVI's economy? Well, well, what I would say to that is that we, we, when you speak of protectionism, you speak of protectionism of the local population. Um, those things come hand in hand you know, um, the passing of the, of the Trade Commission Act initially, we have to look at the social, um, the economic and the environmental impacts of anything that we do. Um, it might be perceived that we're being protective 
of our local population. But I, I think that we see that everywhere around the world. I think what we need to look at is how long it takes for a response from when an application is received and it should not be perceived as protectionism, but we need to look at how expeditiously we can say yes or no. Is it beneficial to the BVI as a whole and not just in part? Yes or no. But I, I don't know of any country that does not look out for the belongers of their country. So um, I, I, that's, that's, my, that's my opinion on that. And I think that um, it is a balancing act, but we do have to, the, the socioeconomic impact is very important as well when we make decisions relating to foreign investment. We have seen in other Caribbean countries and other countries across the world where the, the local people are often disenfranchised. And that is something that we do not want to have happen. I think that we have done a pretty good job over the years where we have a, a good balance of persons in and out of the territory and we do not have situations where there's a, there's a there's strife between different persons on a large scale. So yes, at the end of the day, we, we must protect the, the local people. However, it, will, it cannot be to the detriment of the economy, the environment, or the social status of the country. We, we will and we must make sure that all local people are trained, that they get the experience locally and internationally that they need to be able to function, whether they're here in the territory or whether they are anywhere else in the world. That is why we are, we, we have quite a few programs on stream now, our marine professional program. We have the solar technician program, the first cohort, which is wrapping up shortly. And every single person that passes that solar technician program Will be, will be certified to walk anywhere in the world. So, so, so that is where we're going in terms of making sure that it, it, it is not perceived as protectionism, but it is perceived that we too have people that will be and are highly qualified to move in any sphere of the, of the economy. Thank you for that answer. Um, why are we creating more rules as opposed to less rules to facilitate foreign investments? At the moment, it is very challenging to do business in the BVI. Why don't we get rid of trade licenses as a tool to limit doing business and let the market regulate itself? I think I've heard that question um, before. Um, I, I see it, and I, I know the rest of our government sees it. We need to be able to keep track of who has a license and, and who doesn't. There must be some kind of order um, within the society. Um, there are issues that will pop up um, of liability. Um, we, we cannot just have persons just opening up businesses everywhere, any type of business without any sort of structure. That is the way that I am, I am looking at it, Liz, that you're the policy analyst. You might have um, your take on it and why we need to regulate. I, I, I don't see the rules as being cumbersome um, once the Trade Commission comes on force because you, you, you will, it, the, trade the, the, the trade department will be eliminated. There won't be a trade department anymore. So it's not like we're going to have 
the Trade Department and the Trade Commission. So it's, it's not additional rules. We're just streamlining the process and, and all of the rules, the regulations that, that, um, that put us in a position to be able to have a trade license, whether it is belong or non belong. Thank you. Thank you, Junior Minister. Um, I'm actually quite surprised of the question because um, it is the responsibility of any government, um, any responsible government, to put the necessary frameworks in place to systemically develop the economy. And these, these instruments are not um, like heavy-handed regulation. Actually, they're part and parcel promotional instruments that will seek to generate more investment into the territory instead of ha having the, the economy develop helter-skelter there needs to be some strategic direction in which the, the government will take its economy. There will be some um, areas where there are things happening where the government will have to facilitate, which they did not strategically put, but any, gov any responsible government who wishes to take their economy forward will put the necessary things in place and which this government is doing putting the necessary legal framework in place to develop its economy so th that's my that's my answer to that question okay well uh foreign direct invest uh, investment trade licenses still be required for a holder of a land holding license and if so um, is this deemed FDI as the applicant could not be local so you know we have two types of uh, land holding licenses you have belonger land holding licenses and non belonger uh, land holding licenses and you have certain dispensations for both uh, so if someone already has a land holding license, will they also be considered uh, FDI? Um, I will speak to the issue of uh, why someone with a non-belongers land holders license would need a trade license. A lot of persons come, they want to build a vacation home for themselves and their family. And then we see that particular um, property being advertised for rent as a villa. And so they are now conducting business in the territory and would require a trade license. It, it, it cannot be done based on my understanding where you have a property management company. They cannot use the property management company's trade license, that particular standalone villa must have a, a trade license because they are not now coming in as a, to vacation in their vacation home. Somebody from, they're from New York and somebody saw their promotion on the internet in California and they want to, to, to pay to be in that villa here in the British Virgin Islands. So in fact, they're now conducting business in the territory. So the answer is yes, they will be required to have a foreign direct investment trade license, although they already own land in the BVI. But they but they own owning land or owning a property that is for rental. If they if they built a villa, they and they're renting it out as a villa property as an accommodation property they're conducting businesses the same thing as a, a belonger owning an apartment building that that um, belonger should have a trade license to be able to rent those 20 apartments that they have in that building they're conducting business in the territory 
Okay. Um, what is being done to make the regulatory process, including but not limited to the application process, transparent? Okay, can 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 that that person that's asking that question is the what what in the process is not transparent as it is now? I, I guess I would answer the question is that the new regime is to make the process more transparent and objective. So even though there are challenges with the current process, this uh, new um, regime seeks to rectify all those challenges and make it objective and transparent. Um, if I could be so presumptuous as to answer that. Um, you can be, <laughs> thank you. You are um, correct. You are correct. Um, and we will be um, sending the, the slides as well as the, the acts for, for, for people to, to review. Um, uh, this is a question, uh, I guess, for the minister. Has the number of trade license applications pending increased or decreased under the current VIP administration in your estimate? Um, I, I, I think that they, that we saw quite a major increase um, based on what I've been told by the director. Even when, the, when we launched the Trade Commission, um, she did see an increase in applications coming in as well. And, and I would go a step further to say with, because of COVID, a lot of persons got very creative because now what they might have been doing before was not working and they had to be innovative and adapt to the, to the, to the pandemic. So there were quite a few persons that applied for trade licenses. Um, a lot of young people, for example, um, becoming messengers and delivery and opening delivery companies or businesses. So there, there has been an increase in the amount of licenses that have, that have com, um, come in, applications that have come in to be approved. Okay, um, th there is a black market, um, uh, alleged black market with belongers to have a uh, license approved. What are you doing to avoid this practice? Well, I guess you would call that fronting. That's what they call it, um, Lizette. That's what you mean that someone would use a belonger, a non-belonger would use a belonger to get a, a, a trade license. If 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 that is so, um we know that it we it does exist. We we cannot say that it does not exist. Um due diligence is very important. Um we have seen it, and um Sometimes I will be very honest, it's very blatant where you would have a belonger um, in a company, they, they um, start trying to form a company and their share is 1%. So right away, and depending on what the type of businesses, you know that, that this happens. So I, I think with the Trade Commission and Lizette can elaborate a little bit more. These are things that we're going to be looking at uh, more closely as well. Yes, indeed, the Trade Commission, and um, that, that is the reason why we, we are indicating that the processes will be now better streamlined, the requirements will be outlined appropriately so that things don't change um, based on, on, on whoever the person is, but there will be a, the, the strict guideline in place already. And that's what makes it transparent as well. Um, but I, I think to avoid um, the front end, there will be um, required extra due diligence in, in some, some, some respects because simply sending in an application doesn't give you uh, a look behind of, of, of the application and, and what is really um, standing behind that application unless you do 
some extra um, due diligence. Uh, so let me move on because we still have a number of questions uh, to answer. There is a reference to change in business licensing for established businesses regulated currently on the FSC governance, the Financial Services Commission governance, and placing this with the Trade Commission. Will the FSC be decommissioned? Who are the proposed board members of the Trade Commission? Do they have any relevant qualifications to make their decision? I think this uh, person uh, misunderstood what was said, so can you clarify that? The Financial Services Commission will not be decommissioned, so to speak. Um, so can you address that? No, I, 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 what, what we said is that the, the trade the trade department will will become the trade commission so so um nothing to do with the financial services um commission so the trade department will be no more it will become the trade commission So businesses that are regulated under the FSC will still be regulated under the FSC, I guess is the, is the question. Yes, if, yeah. if once, once they go through the, the, the appropriate act, they will see under um, the financial services activities that financial services um, are regulated under the Financial Services Commission. So they won't be regulated under the Trade Commission, um, they will remain under the Financial Services Commission. However, the Trade Commission and the Financial Services Commission will work in tandem with each other as it relates to the various um, responsibilities and activities. So all of those discussions will be ongoing to ensure that. Okay. In seeking the new investment, can BVI make a streamlined and rapid work permit process for foreign investors or foreign workers without medical screening if they are coming from developed countries who can send tourists to the BVI without health checks? Right now, um, with, because of COVID, I, I would... Um, I would simply say that that is not something that we are we are um, that we would want to do at this particular point in time. If persons are coming in to walk to, we, we whether they're coming from a developed country or not, for the safety of our small population outside of COVID, they should um, they should do their medical checks. I I know that. If you're coming on a temporary permit for a shorter period of time, those, those medicals are sometimes not necessary. But, but that part of it, I think, would be a, a question for, for immigration and labor to get more detail. But based on what is happening now health-wise in the world, it would be unwise for us to have persons come to the territory without the necessary um. Health, health checks before they enter the territory. Okay, just, just to go back on that question, um, Minister uh, Flax Charles, because both of you, um, Ms. George and, and, and the Minister, you have said that the commission is going to be a one-stop shop. And if it's a one-stop shop, um, will it be also requiring the, the health approvals as well as everything else that is required by, by the immigration department? Well, well, we will still have to adhere to whatever rules and regulations those departments have. What we are saying, and Lizette can reiterate that, is that you won't, after you finish with us, you won't have to physically go to immigration or labor or you won't have to, to send them that information. We will take all of that information and handle it right, right through to the end. But, but, but to cast aside all of the rules and regulations from those departments um, would not be a wise thing to do because we still have to regulate who comes in and out of the country and who comes in and out of the country to walk as well. 
Yes, indeed. That's it. That is exactly how it will work. Um, remember, the IPA or the Trade Commission is just the facilitator, but we won't change any any rules as it relates to the government agencies. We will only partner with the government agencies in terms of facilitating the processes. Okay, we have quite a number uh, of questions. We've gone a bit over time. So we're going to add a, an additional um, 10 to 15 minutes and then we're going to wrap up. So I'm just going to go through the questions swiftly um, and then so you can answer them. And then I also need to look at the chat because a, a number of questions have been posted there. So I'm just going to run through some of the questions and maybe you can answer them all in one. Um, for non-regulated uh, for non-regulated activities, why should locals need a trade license at all? Why should a belonger need anyone's approval to open a, a restaurant? Um, and I think Lizette answered that question earlier, so no need to answer it again. Have you been working with uh, infra Infrastructure Ministry and the RDA to have a most attractive uh, country? Well, well, definitely we are all walking hand in hand as it relates to ensuring that the country is beautiful, that the roads are are. are smooth and so we, we we're, we're going to be walking hand in hand with tourist the tourist board ministry of transportation utilities and walks and every single agency must be involved in whatever we're doing that's why i mentioned before if someone is coming in with some sort of a factory and the 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 waste from that ends up going into the sea how does that help us with our environment so the ministry of natural resources quite naturally would have to be involved in the process at some point um so that 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 we make sure that we protect the environment that their waste management processes are, are in place we will soon be rolling out the waste management plan for the entire territory and that is something that has been long in coming. So one, as we say in the BVI, one hand can't clap. All of the entities must work together in order to make, make the wheel turn smoothly. Okay. Um, we had a question about comparing, I guess, the immigration policy in the Cayman Islands where approximately the top 20% of foreign uh, workers by earnings are actively encouraged to stay and become uh, permanent uh, re resident. Uh, does the BVI intend to consider something like that? Um, and what role are, are banks going to, to play in, in this? Uh, if trade licenses are being developed, uh, helping develop the economy, why are not uh, more being granted. Um, does the Trade Commission have an obligation or duty to keep the details of the nature of proposed businesses confidential? Um, I'll answer that first question. That's a lot of questions to remember all at once. However, I'm not familiar with that policy in the Cayman Islands. That is something that we will have to research and read upon to, to, and to speak with our counterparts in the Caymans to find out if it really works for them and how it works. And Junior Minister, might I add, um, if the, the, in one of the investment incentives is residency by investment, and under the residency by investment, it will target um, certain types of persons in terms of persons who have made significant contributions to the to the economy and to the to, to the development of the economy. And it's not so it's not only to for investor, but person with a substantial business presence. So that will be covered under the residency by investment. Um, 
uh, question, another question was why do, um, what role do you expect governments uh, to have or uh, the banks play in, in this vision and new direction? Did I miss, so you want to answer it or you're gonna, you want you, me to answer it? Go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. Um, the Trade Commission, uh, the, the desire is to establish close relationship and linkages with all of the sector associations to ensure that everything that, the, the, that is done um, meets the needs of the private sector. So we want to be able to establish uh, specific relationships with whether it be the banking association, the, the bar association, the accounting association to, to discuss the, the, their specific sectors in terms of developing standards, um, developing um, opportunities for, in, for further investment and, and further growth and development of the specific sector so that it can benefit the growth of the economy. So yes, is the simple answer. Uh, we would like to establish um, a relationship, a private public sector relationship with all, all so industry agencies and associations. And certainly with the general financial services uh, industry, because we have uh, particular uh, concerns. Um, there was a question about the proposed business um, applications and will they be kept confidential? Do you have an obligation? Is there within the, the law or in the Trade Commission that the obligation to keep the uh, proposed businesses confidential. And of course, that is something that's very critical to, to business. Um, are you are you are you referring to the type of business that someone might be wanting to start so that nobody else um takes that idea or that concept is that is that what you're saying I think that would certainly be a consideration um I, I think people when they put in an application would want to make sure that there's a certain level of confidentiality um in terms of of their business proposal so it's not um taken by someone else right well i i, I would expect and i think that that is something that we, we we would want to have in place, um, notwithstanding the fact that once that business is approved and opened, unless they have the, the legal protections of uh, copyright trademarks and patents and so forth, that someone else might not decide to open the same type of business, which is something that you see happening that happens on a regular in the BVI. And it is something that we, we try to discourage because we want people to be creative and innovative so that, that they, they, the customer base has a lot more choices um, to choose from. Um, this is a, a question and, and I, I, I hope we can get through all the questions in the next, as the BVI has no significant large hotels with a volume of rooms for our tourists, all the established BVI villas, foreign and locally owned, form part of the total room availability. Why are you limited trade licenses for villa rentals if this is an essential part of the economy? Both rental companies, landscaping, supermarkets, ferries, cleaning companies, and many more businesses benefit from foreign owners renting out their properties. Does this not seem to be recognized as an essential source of, of foreign investment? I don't think you are um, um, I, um, there, I, I don't know that, that we are limiting um, persons from, from having a trade license for a villa. Once it's legitimate and they meet, um, the, the tourist board usually does an inspection if the if the property is coming into the accommodation market, um, there's no there's never been any talk of limiting that. 
Okay. Someone is asking, why do you need a tuberculosis test from the US or the UK? Uh, I think that's a health question uh, that will be addressed. So I'll move on. Why do you need health checks to do a work permit in the UK, US, Singapore, Hong Kong? Um, you don't need, and why do you need it in the BVI? Again, that's another health question. Um, if the BVI wants a beautiful country, why doesn't it have a planning zoning and why does it not enforce um, planning its own planning laws? Um, there are planning laws. I think that there's something being worked on as it relates to zoning. And um, while the while each of these different departments and so forth might have an inspector on board, all enforcement of any law in the territory lies with the police for the most part, any enforcement. Okay. And, uh -huh. and that is something that we're, that we're working on to, to streamline as well, because there, there, there's a disconnect there. And um, a, a, a lot of the laws and so forth are not enforced um, because the, 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 the police um, seems to have a, a major challenge with enforcing um, some, of the, some of these laws. At least that is my opinion. I'm not knocking the police because I have a good relationship with, with, with lots of police officers and, and they really do their best. But a lot of the, any law in the books has to be enforced by the police. Okay, um, you, you mentioned in, in the slides the criteria for granting or renewing licenses. Will an application be renewed, be required to renew a license right now or only when you make an annual fee? Or when you pay? Well, I, I know right now we, every year you have to um, renew your trade license. And, 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 and that's required um, as well when you, when you go to, to customs and you're clearing items, there are certain concessions that certain businesses have and they would need to show that their trade license is up to date as well as with labor and immigration that your licenses are up to date when you're renewing the work, your work permit um, employees. Okay, um, I had a client who told me that he incorporated a fishing business in the BVI, but his employees were based in Latin America. Will there be an arrangement to deal with global employees? Uh, secondly, how will you handle virtual employees for tech related businesses who may not reside in the BVI? I think those are two different things because you're asking about um, a company that's incorporated uh, in the BVI under the Financial Services uh, Commission, uh, the Business Companies Act. So their employees could be anywhere in the world. And I, I think the second part of the question um, is probably one that um, this panel can address. How will you handle virtual employees for tech related businesses who may not reside in the BVI? Lizette, I think you should answer that one. How do we deal with employees on, in what manner in terms of work permit requirements? Is, is that what they're asking? Because if they're not um, resident here in the, in the BBI, I don't right. think we have any, um, they don't have any responsibility to us if they're not resident here in the Virgin Islands. So if I'm doing a virtual business, so I'm, you know, I'm delivering, let's say, you know, if I have a, a Uber Eats or even an Uber and the persons who are managing that are outside, I guess it's the same thing as if you're doing um, uh, Airbnb. So it's, it's, it's not managed in the territory. So you're not responsible. Right. Okay. Um, let's move on and we can close. Um, are there fines in place or any course of legal action that the Trade Commission can take when BBI landers, belongers 
who purport to be owner of a business, but is actually fronting for a non-belonger's uh, business. I think the Minister answered that already. Okay. Um, so I just had uh, one last question um, before we wrap up. And that was, you said that you looked at different countries in establishing um, this, this new Trade Commission and, and the Business Licensing and, and Trade License Act. Um, what countries were you benchmarking the, the BVI on? That's pleasant. Sorry, I actually thought I was un, un, unmuted. We looked at <laughs> Cayman, TCI, Bermuda, um, as it relates to overseas territories. Then we looked at Barbados. And then we look at um, outside of the Caribbean, because that's how, that's how we did our research. We, look, we, we, we normally use overseas territories first, then we go to the wider, wider Caribbean, and then we, we go um, further external. And what we do, we also share information with our international organizations to ensure that um, we, we are not in contravention of any, any, any external, external regime. Okay. But I don't, I, I don't think we went any further than the Caribbean. For, okay. but but that that was for the fees though. I guess generally, but the fees as well. well. Generally, generally, we 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 looked at so many different countries as it relates to the entire national trade policy of the Virgin Islands. So I can't even give you that list. Okay. To be quite honest with you, because remember the the national trade policy covers um, trade and export development. It covers investment promotion and facilitation. It covers uh, fair trade as it relates to uh, fair competition and consumer protection. It covers the, the licensing regime as well as the business support and facilitation. So, uh, but I must say those, those, those areas uh, that require international um, compliance or we, we looked at um, our, key, our key agency for best practices is the UN. We, all, we always look at, we look first at UN models. We look at UN, UN reviews of different countries regime. So say for instance, with the investment policy, we looked at the United Nations investment policy review of various countries within the United Nations. Okay. And that's how uh, we were able to come up with a policy for investment. And then our aid, uh, attorney general's chambers will take that information and then they will do their additional research to find which, which investment act will be the best uh, act to, to benchmark, and then they will design it according to our economic needs. Okay, um, we're going to wrap up now. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to just wrap up and say some last words. So Ms. George, uh, can you go first? And then I'll have the, the minister. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Donovan, for this opportunity to be able to share uh, the National Trade Policy, uh, the Trade Commission, and all of its instruments um, under, which, under which it will operate. I do believe that we will be establishing a very close relationship with the BVI Finance in terms of rolling out future, future initiatives, future legislation, future strategies. And I would like to thank all of the participants who um, showed an interest in, in learning and gaining, gaining an understanding. And I encourage you to please, please 
review the two documents because your feedback is valuable to us. We can't always get it right the first time. And with your help, we will get it right moving forward. So you can send all of your feedback to VI Trade Commission at gov.vg. Um, let me repeat that. The, the email that you can send it to is VI Trade Commission at gov.vg. And you, get, you have a deadline of April 6th for which to send in all of your comments and recommendations for consideration uh, for these acts. Thank you very much once again. I too would like to thank everyone for tuning in. And um, it, it is not often that we, we get the opportunity to all sit together, whether virtually or physically, to have a discussion on something as important as, as this. And I, I too want to thank everyone for participating and to encourage you to send your recommendations, whether you feel that we might like them or not, they are very important to us and not only to us, but to the entire territory. We have pledged to be very open in terms of when we bring things to the house that the entire population is able to to be involved in the consultations. And so we want you to be as open with us as possible so that we and, and go through both of the bills so that we are able to come to a conclusion that is as close to perfect as possible. Not, nothing in this world is perfect. However, there will be room for, for tweaks even after um, you've gone through it. And when we go to the house and we go into the committee stage, your recommendations would be considered in that area. And as Ms. George said, the deadline is the 6th of, of April. And the email, the web email address is vitradecommission at gov.bg. Once again, on behalf of the Trade Commission, the Premier's Office, BBI Finance and everyone else, we want to say a heartfelt thank you for being here. And you can let those persons that might have missed the opportunity to, to be on today. We do have a question and answer at 2.30. You can, you can pull that up on the government's Facebook page and we will be on from 2.30 to 3.30 today. And follow on that program, we will let persons know of our entire schedule for the rest of the month where we will have um, consultations and stakeholders meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much everyone for joining us for this BVI Finance Breakfast Forum. We've certainly learned quite a lot today about the Virgin Islands Trade Commission, the Business Licensing Act, as well as the Trade and Investment um, Act. Uh, we also learned that we're going to be having a fair trade division, a trade division, a policy division, as well as an investment promotion agency, and how those will be in, interacting with our financial services industry. And I know a lot of us have been uh, concerned about how we are going to uh, accommodate economic substance. And we hope that based on what we've learned today, that this will certainly be fast tracked and put into motion so that we can see the growth that we've all been looking for and hoping for in the jurisdiction. Um, the trade and investment uh, promotion and the trade commission sounds like um, it's going to be a massive undertaking and we congratulate the honorable um, junior minister, honorable Shireen Flax Charles, and we congratulate the senior policy analyst in the premier's office, Ms. Lizette George, for all the information that they've provided to us today, as well as for all the work that has gone into bringing this to fruition. And we ask you to continue to play your part 
and to be a part of the consultation review the act and to send in more questions and more concerns and to also register your suggestions for the second and the third reading uh, when the, the act goes into committee stage as the minister has outlined. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Elise Donovan for BVI Finance. Do have a pleasant day.